doing today? Evan and Tiki here on a Wednesday in New York City. For the New York Met fan out there, we'll get you set for the biggest game of the year. Because that's what they're going to play later today. Coming up at exactly 245, we get into how and why what the Mets need to do to make the postseason. That's all coming up. we got a lot of football to discuss as well, including a scheduled Lugash Debate Series Part 2, Tommy DeVito versus Daniel Jones. That's coming up later on in the show as well. And we'll get to the Jets to start, but obviously today is 9-11. I think every year when we wake up on 9-11, I think of the same couple of things. The first thing I think about is how another year has gone by and there are more and more people walking our city and walking our country who know 9-11 as a historical event and didn't experience that. And I think that's just a part of being old and a part of life just moving on. But that to me is like, if you are under the age, and we have a lot of young listeners, if you're under the age of 35, it's a historical moment that your parents tell you about. Mm -hmm. And that is very difficult to get through my mind and your mind because we all remember everything about that day. It still makes me shake thinking about that day. And it's been 23 years, and there's a generation of people who think of it as, yeah, it was, it was, it was a horrible day, but I read about it in a textbook. Well, yeah. Well, if, for me, and I'm, I mean, obviously I was playing, it's one of those days where you never – Forget, and that's the slogan. It's obviously the the mantra that we as Americans espouse at this point. But I'll never forget how I felt that day. Mm. It was the first time in my life where I felt scared, like scared about the country that I lived in. And it wasn't because of anything happening from someone threatening me, but it, I felt scared for our country, especially after the Pentagon was hit. Is it, it felt like everything was coming down. Yes. I don't know if anybody has seen that movie Red Dawn. Remember that movie? You guys are too young on the other side of the glass. Maybe even, I don't even know if you saw it, Evan, because you're probably too young as well. So I'm a decade, almost a decade older than you. It was the Russians invading the United States. Right. And like these kids are trying to take up arms and fight the Russians. I mean, it's, it's improbable. But I remember watching that movie and, and thinking like, man, what would happen if that actually occurred? On 9-11, that's mm. what it felt like. No doubt. I felt that emotion. And so the one thing that's been amazing, though, is that in especially in New York and today, and I'm, I'm mentioning this specifically because this morning I spent the day down at BCG on Water Street and then at Cantor Fitzgerald uh, raising money for a charity, uh, the Achilles Foundation, which is a disabled athletes who are doing all kinds of amazing athletic endeavors, running marathons, triathlons, climbing mountains, whatever whatever a, a, a disabled athlete would want to do, Achilles helps facilitate that. John Stewart is one of their ambassadors. We saw him down at the f- a firehouse uh, on our way. And it, they've turned, we have turned this morbid day into a celebration of what's so good about this country and that's giving mm. and 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 facilitating and being being great to people and uh i'm thankful i'm thankful for the opportunity to go down to bcg and to Cantor and all the money that they've raised for all of the charities we'll get into it a little bit later because there were some interesting people that i ran into uh Lugie, you'll like it uh sean you'll like it as well the guys I, the guys i've met and uh I'm, I'm looking forward to talking about how good of a day it's been for a lot of charities thanks to bcg and to Cantor Fitzgerald. yeah it's so eight years ago my son was born on 9 11 it made it a very weird day for that to happen and as he's gotten Older's asked me questions about mm. it because he knows this is a day. Yeah. This is a day where we stop and we mourn and we talk. And what I've told him the last couple of years when he's asked is I now think of just the heroes. Yeah. And I think of this day is a day in which there were men and women who ran into buildings and only thought about helping others. Right. That's what I think about. Like we lost so many innocent people, we could have lost more. Right. There were people who ran into buildings to save others others so it's a tough day it's a day that makes you realize that when we're about to scream about the jets and the mets and the giants and the yankees it's the toy store it's the fight we always say it's the candy store but it's a day and you said it best we will never forget i will never forget you will never forget and everybody in our audience will certainly never forget now last night i couldn't sleep and you know what happens tiki when i can't sleep you get up and you uh watch wrestling (laughs) sometimes i did something productive last night i did something very helpful i made a list okay i made a list and it's got two columns on this wonderful list column a is fugazi and column b facts all right 
and it involves the New York Jets, who are in last place in the AFC East. Oh, stop that. It's you, one game. I'm just... Uh, they're in last place in the you're, AFC you're, East. You're given facts, but they're stupid facts. Well, keep going. that's just... The, and also, a team that I was lectured yesterday, maybe not as talented as we all thought. <laughs> and so I sat there last night because I don't want to overreact to one game, and I also now had 24 hours to let it all marinate. And I wrote down the things that are absolute legitimate concerns, things that are facts, things that going into week two against Tennessee and yep. going into week three against New England, it is not hyperbolic to bring up and say, hey, I'm concerned about this. That's the facts column. And then I made the Fugazi column. Okay. That's the stuff that, what are we doing here? Are we really worried about that? Like, that's just overreaction of week one stuff. That's, you know, sky is falling stuff. So I made a list of the two things, all right? Okay. And you tell me where I'm right and where right. I'm wrong as a Jet fan as we move closer and closer to Redemption Sunday. Because that's what Sunday needs to so be. So I'm either confirming a check or I'm putting an X. That's right. Okay. Let's start with the facts. I am deeply concerned about this defensive line. I am. Okay, Hassan Reddick, and you talked about this yesterday, isn't going to save stopping the run, right. but he's going to allow a pass rush, something the Jets had none of on Monday night, and something that they actually did get consistently last year without blitzing. And so when I look at the talent on the defensive line and I remind myself that Michael Clemens is still on this team and Tack McKinley and Will McDonald is a first-round pick who needs to prove he's that and Javon Kinlaw, who I thought stunk on Monday night, and Jalen Holmes, like, if I'm being fair... That's the talent on the roster, mm -hmm. and that's not that good. Yes. So when we talked about this yesterday, my point was, yes, it will help a ton once Hassan Reddick is here rushing the passer, but their issue was stopping the run, right? And that's that's just good offensive line play, good scheme, pushing around the, def the, the, the Jets' defensive fronts on some occasions. It wasn't all the time, but it was a lot of, a lot of those occasions to the point where a, a young runner in Jordan Mason, who nobody's heard of, rushed for 140 something yards last uh, on on Monday night. And so, will he help? Yes, but you still got to figure out how to stop the run. Part of that is defensive scheming, but a lot of it's 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 just effort. It's it's clogging holes. It's being lane specific. It, that should absolutely be a concern. And it is. And I think that is a fair concern coming out of week one that they could not stop the run. They got absolutely no pass rush. And when you look at the talent on the defensive line, I think Joe Douglas may have been a little bit too arrogant. And not just arrogant in terms of the Hassan Reddick situation, mm -hmm. but arrogant in terms of letting Bryce Huff go, giving John Franklin Myers away for nothing. Like... I think there was a thought that ah, Robert Sal and Jeff Ulbrich will be able to scheme their way into this not being an issue. So I don't think it's an overreaction to look at the defensive line and say, you know what, it's not as good as it was last year. I think that's a fact. But let me get to something that I think is fugazi. All right, Brees Hall got shut down on Monday night. Mm -hmm. But I thought overall the offensive line pass protected Aaron Rodgers Fine. very, very well. Fine. They, Only a few, less than a handful of hurries, one sack. That's it. Now, Rodgers does a great job of getting, the, getting rid of the football quickly. They didn't open up a lot of holes for Brees Hall. But you know what? This is the first game, the first week of an offensive line that has a lot of talent. Mm -hmm. Yes, they've got injury questions. I get that. But they're all learning how to play together. John Simpson, Tyron Smith, Elijah Vera Tucker has barely played the last two years because of the injuries he's dealing with. I am not overly concerned about the offensive line, A, protecting the quarterback, which they did a fine job on Monday, and B, opening up holes for Brees well, Hall. Fugazi, I tell you. So I halfway agree with you because I think pass protection is more kind of just your skill. Tyron Smith, very skilled left tackle. He'll be fine. Simpson, same thing. Uh uh, Tipman, I don't know yet. He's still a young player. I, AVT, going to be fine. Morgan Moses, he's been here before. Pass protection is fine. But run blocking is so much more of a coordinated dance as opposed to me against whoever the pass rusher is. It's how are we working together to create something clear for the running back to assess and then execute on. And so that may take time. And I... I if, you, if, if, it, if next week they get stoned, Brees Hall has 30 yards on 8, 15 carries, you're going to start questioning the run game. Well, you know what I would do, though, T? You know I, I mean? would respond so, by throwing the football a little bit more. Yeah, but I've got Aaron Rodgers. It, it, 
But then you, then everybody knows you're really throwing the football. No, like but it, it becomes che- like you start playing checkers when when the defense is playing chess. So if you can't run the football, it just it makes you so simple. It makes you easy to defend. But they went the other way on Monday, where they were so hell bent. And I'm not even ripping this, T, because I understand why. They were so hell-bent on establishing the run yeah, that they became predictable to. the other way but, where they were running on first and second down every true, time. But but they were doing running on first and second down down a lot. But then all of a sudden, when you see a play action, mm-hmm. it created so much space. Yeah, sure. So you have to do it. You have to. It's just doing it effectively. I worry for the early part of the season because that takes time. Run, offense, Line offensive line play, it just takes time. It does take time, but don't you think overall they've got the talent there yes, to that's make why this I work? Half, that's why I half agreed with okay. you. Okay. Because I think pass protection-wise, and ultimately I, they'll figure it out. Morgan Moses is a smart guy. He's a UVA guy, by the way. So, of course, they got to figure it <laughs> of out. Of course. Yeah, Tyron Smith's been playing forever, and AVT is one of the best guards before the injuries took over for the last couple of seasons. They're going to be fine, but I'm only half agreeing with your Fergazi comment because I worry about that run scheming, that run uh, cohesion that only happens with repetitions together. I'll give you another thing that's Fugazi. The idea that Aaron Rodgers is a 40-year-old quarterback and you've just got to worry nah, about he, it. Yeah, that's Fugazi. Look, he is 40, and yes, guys can get hurt. It's I give a, you that. It's the freaking NFL. Yeah, that third drive, he was amazing. He was amazing. And look, obviously, if Aaron Rodgers is running for his dear life, Aaron Rodgers is more likely to get hurt. Yeah. But the early indications are, A, he's smart enough to get get rid of the football quickly, something his predecessor wasn't able to do. And number two, they pass protected very well in week one, which gives me hope that that trend is going to continue. That's a nice, easy talking point to say, well, he's 40-year-old Aaron Rodgers. Well, yeah, 40-year-old Aaron Rodgers actually looked pretty damn good when he was out there. Agreed. So that is not— I can't can't argue with that one. Because it's a Fugazi concern. I I mean— I told you, I, I wrote you guys, I almost wrote you guys, Darren's really good. He's just so good he's when good. he's on. When, he, when he's commanding it and he's putting the ball where he wants wants it to go, when his release is just, it, you watch Aaron Rodgers throw the football, when he makes a decision where it's going, the ball gets there. Oh, zip. It's there. Yeah. And that's, you know, it's funny, like I'm watching the Giants, and Dan, that's what Daniel Jones isn't doing. Mm. He's not, that decision isn't happening and that microsecond that you have to have it happen in order to you know, make well, easy completions. But with Aaron Rodgers, he makes a decision, the ball's gone. And, and one thing, thinking back to Monday, that is so incredibly frustrating is that we sat here virtually for a year and a half waiting to see him play. Yeah. Aaron Rodgers was a theory. Yeah. We watched the old videos. We remember his time in Green Bay, but he wasn't a New York Jet. You can't even count the four plays last year before he got hurt. And then on Monday night, he's finally out there. He's the quarterback of the team. And a lot of it, not his fault. He yeah. just didn't have enough plays. Yeah. And that was, we didn't see enough of them. Like we saw the glimpses of him. And then there were certain things, whether it was the defense not being able to get off the field, whether it was the early drop by Alan Lazard, whether it was the fumble by Brees Hall, there were things that kept us from seeing Aaron Rodgers more. Yeah. And we need to see Aaron Rodgers more. But that is not a concern. And to say injuries, look, it's the NFL. Anybody can get hurt. I mean, just look around the league. (laughs) Everybody's an injury concern. Here's one that's a fact, though, a real legitimate concern. And even though in totality the New York Jets were not called for a lot of penalties on Monday night, they were called for a couple of big ones. There was an illegal hands to the face called on Jermaine Johnson who did not have a good game on a third down with the Jets trying to come back down 23-7. It directly led to San Francisco kicking a field goal to go up by 19. Here's why that's a legitimate concern. Robert Sala coached a really good defense last year, and him and Jeff Albrecht deserve a lot of credit. Yep. And I don't expect him to be completely outcoached every week like we saw Monday against the great Kyle Shanahan. But we have become used to the fact that there is that big penalty on defense that kills this team. Yeah. Every single week, there's one. And so when that penalty is called on Jermaine Johnson, and it was legit, I'm not going to whine about the officials. That was a real penalty. It's a reminder that that's what this defense even did last year when they yeah. played a lot better. It's like the little things. It's not the ones that are that are going to get a show up in the highlight reel, but it's the little things that help that make you lose against good teams. Yeah, those things will crush you against good teams. And that leads to the other real concern: this head coach. 
It may not be every every single week, but Jet fans, we have bigger goals than just beating the Tennessee Titans and winning nine or ten games and making the playoffs. Granted, that's the first goal because you got to make the playoffs. You can't just start running. You got to walk first. But our dream, especially when you have a 40-year-old quarterback, especially when you are having an all-in season where basically you brought in Hassan Reddick and said, go play one year, get right. paid, and then you're gone. Joe Douglas is in a contract year. They've got to win. Making the playoffs is nice. They haven't done it in a long time. They have to win. And what Monday reminded me was while they may be fine on Sunday against Brian Callahan coaching his second game for the Tennessee Titans, yeah. and they may be fine against Gerard Mayo two weeks later, a guy who's still a rookie head coach. He's only coached one game, two by the time we get to Thursday. I don't trust Robert Sala against Andy Reid. Hmm. I don't trust Robert Sala, and I hate to say it because I don't like him personally, against Sean McDermott, especially on today of all days. I think Sean McDermott's a disgrace. But I'm not going to bring that up again. That's the past, especially today. But I don't trust Robert Sala coaching against these established big-time yeah. coaches. I mean, and I think Monday was a preview of that, so, Zeke. So it's a legitimate one because – I mean, this is the this is the old Barcel's cliche. You are what your record says you are. You are what you've done against the the coaches that are quote unquote better than you. And that's what Robert Sala still has to do. It's a work in progress. But you have to start beating teams and slash coaches that are viewed as better than you. Because that's the only way you become or even start to get in that conversation. Like you have to win games against in games that you're not supposed to win or that that the the, the pundits will say you're going to be out coached in. And it's easy to say, it's really hard to do cuz so much of it is is things that aren't in your control. You know what I mean as a mm. coach? Cuz you can call the right defense and the next thing you know someone busts and you get a humongous 50-yard play. Is it your fault? You called the right defense. Someone messed it up. That's so, what you told me about the Lion game two years ago. Yeah. No. Called the right play. Right. It got busted. They lost. It got busted. They, it's exactly right. And so some of it is in his control. A lot of it's not. But the things that matter, the decisions that matter, and the moments that matter, and games that matter, you got to win them. You got to. Otherwise, I think for Coach Sala, especially if it becomes subpar than what the expectation is this year, He's not going to be here. What are the real jet concerns coming out of week one? 888-808-1019. And one of the Fugazi ones that haters like to bring up because they hate us. Just remember, they hate us. Sean Morass, not to just pick on you, he hates us. Half of the Giant fans that you know, that you hang out with, they're good people. But they hate us. The national media hate us. Everyone who doesn't like Aaron Rodgers Hate us. The New York Jets suck. We'll get to your calls coming up, 888-808-1019. And speaking of Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Rodgers is warning to New York Jet fans. We'll get to that coming up. Plus, at 245, Met fans, it is as big as it gets later today. We'll get into what they need to do to win this series and make the postseason. 888-808-1019. We are live from the Town Fair Tire Studios, powered by Town Fair Tire. Nobody beats Town Fair Tire. Nobody. 